Welcome to the DLLS Rangers Weekly Podcast, now part of the All City Network. Hit the subscribe button for YouTube and also become a DLLS diehard at www.alldlls.com. Now here's Jeff and John. Hey everybody, welcome to the DLLS Rangers Weekly Podcast. This is episode number eight and today, Emily Jones McCoy, I always add the McCoy because I know Mike. Yeah. Is going to be joining us. We're going to talk about Rangers off season stuff like that, how she thought the season went. But more importantly, we're going to talk about do it for dirt. Well, I'm wearing my do it for dirt shirt, by the way. I am not. I'm, yeah. I, but I'm I mean, wearing my one of my favorite things. I mean, this is my favorite time of year. I I say that, and I want to be very clear. I wish we were not doing this right. at all because <laughs> Richard was still here. Yeah. I didn't know Richard, but man, all the stories are just about how fantastic. But I know Kelly. Sure. And I know the kids, and because of them, I have to imagine that Richard was just one of the coolest dudes ever. Great guy, one yeah. of the you, you fabulous were a, person. Yeah, you were great friends with him, and, and, and it's one of my favorite events. I hate that we have to ever do any of these events. Truthfully, I fundraisers agree. are usually to help people that need stuff. Yeah, and Kelly has turned this just into one of the greatest things. This has helped so many people. She has, and yeah. she was kind of the one that got behind it and said, "We need to keep this going." Well, we got we we got her blessing. Right. We, we wanted to keep it going, but we weren't going to do it if she said no. Sure. So, Absolutely. Anyway, but we can get to that. We're, 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 we're going to talk about yeah. that with Emily and everything going on. World Series is set. It is. It is. It's, and this is the this is probably the two biggest names in baseball. You got the New York Yankees versus the the uh, L.A. Dodgers, who used to be the Brooklyn Dodgers, yeah. obviously. So these franchises go all the way back. Heard someone today say, you know, I guess that the Rangers and the Diamondbacks. World Series was the lowest rated World Series. And someone said, well, that was because Josh Hamilton was right. This is a football town. I said, it had nothing to do with that. Yeah. These are two newer franchises with no storied history. And quite honestly, the the TV ratings in Dallas, Fort Worth, and in Phoenix were fantastic right. during the World Series. Sure. But around the nation, nobody else really cared. Well, you know, you know, said baseball fans. Casual baseball fans don't know uh Anything outside of the coast, really? Right, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, the, 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 these are the two. This is the this is the dream matchup if you're the MLB commissioner. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is this <laughs> is you couldn't or the network presidents. You know, this <laughs> this is as good as it gets. Yankees, Dodgers, Otani, Judge, um, you know, and and all, all the storylines like you mentioned, the Dodgers. You know, the first time they played in the World Series, I think this is the twelfth time. The first was in 1941. Right. You know, Jackie Robinson, absolutely. Uh, Mickey Mantle, Don Larson's perfect game in '56 was against Brooklyn, in in what was a great series, a seven game series. Larson's perfect game was Game Five. Uh, you know, and then then the matchups in the the '70s. The last one was '81, which you know <clears throat> uh, is in the, is especially in the news because Fernando Valenzuela passed away, and yeah, he was the World Series MVP that year. Uh, Fernando Mania and all of that. So. Uh, a rich, rich history, and honestly, it's kind of surprising that it's been uh, 43 years since they played in the World Series. Yeah. And so that that you know, you can say, oh, they spend all this money and all this, that, and the other. Well, look, you still got to win. Yeah. <laughs> you still you still got to do it on the field. And so uh, uh, everybody who's rolling their eyes about, oh, it's the Yankees and the Dodgers again. It hasn't been the Yankees and the Dodgers for 43 years. So be quiet. Two, two of the best players in baseball it. are playing and, on each team too. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy enjoy this uh I'm, I'm going to learn something about baseball i'm assuming that the all the, all these past series will come up and um yes that'll be that'll be worth be, the watch yeah, right there baseball, baseball fans will enjoy this well and, and, and let me say this i hate saying this i hate it because i hate the yankees i've never liked the yankees i i because they because my first baseball love experience besides going as a kid was in the mid nineties when the Rangers went on that run and Johnny Oates got them to the playoffs. Uh -huh. And every year, three years in a row, they got beat by the Yankees. That's right. Who went on to win those World Series? And I hated the Yankees then, so I always hate. But I'm going to tell you right now, when the Yankees get in the World Series, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know, you you talk about all these different when the stars align and things happen. Does baseball need the Yankees and the and the Dodgers right now? They could. This is a turmoil time right now. And everything, so this can bring it together. Remember 9-11. 9-11 happened. One of the biggest things that brought everyone back together was when the Yankees played the Diamondbacks that year yeah. in the World Series. Yeah, great series. Diamondbacks won. It was fantastic. Really love that as a guy that hates the Yankees. Yeah. But but nobody can dispute when the Yankees are in the World Series and the Dodgers, that was a big deal. But they played their last World Series win was here when they played <laughs> exactly. in Arlington exactly. in so. front of hardly anybody. But um, I, I'm excited to see it. I mean, I have 
I, I tune in for all the playoffs, and especially when it gets to the games that are elimination, um, because I'm not big fans of any of them. So, I, but I, I, I got to find out the news and just and watch it. And man, um, this I will be glued to this. Yeah, and the you know, the playoffs have been really, really good this year. Uh, the you know the NLCS went six games, but it was like none of the games were great. No, nope. uh, the ALCS was only five games, and and four of the five games are really good. So yeah, um, it, it's it's uh, the Padres Dodgers series was great. Uh, Guardians Tigers was fantastic. Yep. So I mean these these are these have been really good series, and so um, it's been a good October for for baseball. It's unfortunate that the Rangers were were watching instead of participating. Sure. But uh, at least the Astros got knocked out early. If you're that, a Rangers fan, yeah, that, that that was the greatest. Got to wrap your arms around that. So if you if you hate the Yankees, you you hate that they're there. But the more important thing is the Astros got out knocked out in the first round, which you you know we hate them worse, right? So that's that's the I, I come from the fans' perspective. We talk about that every week. With that being said, this is going to be over with in about ten days. Yeah, I think uh, at the most. I mean, going the most, it's probably about ten what ten eleven days. This, it starts Friday, and I believe November second. Would be uh, would be game, game seven, seven if it goes to that, and uh, and then uh, and then the, then the fun and then the Rangers get back into the game. You right. know, yeah. uh, they they, uh, you know, when the last out is made, every all the all, all the free agents become free agents. Okay, right now they can't sign with uh, anybody. Well, they can sign with their own team, but they can't. They can't like five days, the, seven days, five days. It's okay. not a free for all until um, until five, five days. days after the final right. out. And then, um, but during those five days, you have um, players and, you know, players with options, whether it's their own or, or club right. options, those decisions are made. Um, and I think, I think the, the qualifying offer uh, stuff comes out during that time too. So uh, it's a, it's a busy five days. Sure. Um, and then, and then it, and then it starts and then, you know, the, the, conversation start with with players and you know the plans are in place you know the, the plans are in place they they teams that did not make the postseason and even the ones that did they they have their their plans they've been huddled uh yeah ready to go and it's not just one plan it's it's probably well you have to have multiple 12 or 15 right you know and then yeah. and and the if G- the guy you want gets Got by someone else, you've got to go the different direction, right? Yeah. They've probably laid out free agent targets, trade targets. Right. Probably open. Are they allowed to open conversations right now with the team? Uh, you can't talk with, uh, you cannot talk with uh, players. I think you can talk with teams. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Just talk with teams and go, hey. But, but really, the GM meetings, which will happen, uh, that's uh, November 4th and 5th. It's right around the election. Uh, 4th, 5th, and 6th. They're in San Antonio this year. You going uh, down there? I am not going. A family yeah. vacation is, is getting in the way. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of where, you know, all the meetings really start. And and then the winter meetings are here uh, in, in Dallas in, right. in uh first full week. We're going to all go out there. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, it won't be any fun. I'm, I'm kidding. It's it's not fun. I do not like the winter meetings. You're in a hotel all day and you don't get much information. But that's fine. For me, uh, though, it's fun. I want to go for the first time. I've well, never okay. been. So. Uh, well, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> And then, uh, and then uh, you just kind of sit back and wait. You make your phone calls. You, you, you and in this day check and age, you, you check you check Twitter because you know Twitter. It seems like Ken Resenthal and, and Jeff Passan break all the stories. They they get fed from the agents. Okay, where, the Rangers you, are very good about not. Um, where do you think they get their info? Well, I think they get it from the agents. I think they have uh, you know the contracts. Contracts have to go to MLB for approval, so there might be somebody in the somebody there that's tipping them off, or you know, right? But um, I don't know, you know. But good for them; they've they've worked hard to to build themselves into this position, and you know, uh, I don't I don't fault them for it, and they work hard. My gosh, those guys work hard. Yeah. But, uh, um, you know, it, it's hard to break news these days. Hey guys, that's fine. Yeah, that's hey, fine. Well, listen, I want to talk more about this, but real quick, guys, hit that subscribe button down below there. Also, go to uh, DLLS underscore sports YouTube channel. Hit that one too. That's where the daily show goes. Uh, if you've not been watching uh, Jeff, Abby, and, and John, uh, they, they do something daily on the Rangers. You've also got the, the Stars, the Cowboys, and the Mavs starting yeah. tonight. They're all in season now. Yeah, yeah. Is we're this, the only one who's not in season. Yeah, we're so the. <laughs> 
we're the we're the guinea pigs. We're so. the we're the off season. So and and all of that. But but guys, hit those hit those subscribe buttons and uh, and get that going. And and but uh, okay. So we we've talked about pitching. We've talked about you know how about trades. Well, let, let's you know you, you, obviously off seasons are um, dictated by how much money you have, and the Rangers still haven't said what their payroll is going to be. What uh, was it this year? Over uh, 200, right? It was, it was above the first luxury tax, which was around 230. I think they were, I, I don't know if they got over 240 or not, but um, it was big. Uh, it was the highest in team history. That's how they kind of um, massaged that they couldn't sign Jordan Montgomery because we already have the, it's already the biggest in team history. Right. Uh, but anyway, uh, a lot of money does come off the books, but there's still the uncertainty about the TV deal uh, the Rangers are going to try to go out on their own, and that's great. But you know, with that, you've got to you've got to hire people to, to to do the job. You know, it's not like this. Is that they, kind of where they're leaning? They're going to go with no. Their, I mean, it's already been announced, and um, so they're going to do their own streaming service. And TV. well, the details haven't been announced, but they're not going to be with Bally. And we uh, knew that. And and they're. There was some rumor that they're MLB might do, take it over. They're apparently not going to do MLB. So uh, now MLB might ultimately do the production side of it. Um, as uh, you know, it's kind of late in the game, and you got to keep in mind too that the Stars and the Mavs are are, are leaving Bally, have left Bally, right? And so they've hired a every, lot of everybody. Kind of, you know, went from one sport to the next, right? And uh, so you know, the Mavs have hired a lot of people. The Stars hired a lot of people. Uh, there's still people out there to be hired, but um, is it enough? And and so anyway, because it takes it takes a lot of people to produce right. a game. It's not just the three broadcasters. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, and we're not talking about Emily, uh, Emily, Dave, and and the TV people you see on TV or radio broadcast. We're talking about all the behind the scenes huh. people, yeah. all the people that run cameras that run this. You know. All the, I mean, doing a podcast and you know, all the stuff I have to get together to do all of that. And what your studio is there, you have all these people behind the scenes and those are jobs. Right. And they're, you know, and, and to be a producer of a, for a, a baseball team for 162 games, that's a long season. It's a, it's a high paying job. It should okay? be. And, Could, and should so be. the Rangers might not have the appetite for hiring all the people they need to hire. So they have hired salespeople. Uh, they, you know, they have a consultant who's, who's running it, uh, trying to line up the distri distribution and whatnot. And, uh, you know, they want to do some over the air games. So, you know, channel 21 or, or something like that, some free games to bring fans back and give fans who have been missing out on. And they'll get revenue TV. off of that from ad sales and yeah, stuff. And, and they'll get revenue if, if. You know, a family sits down and watches a game and has a great time and sees a great game. They're like, oh, hey, let's go to the ballpark tomorrow or sure. next week or whatever. Yes. So anyway, that's, that's more of a marketing tool, I think. But the um, so anyway, we don't uh, the Rangers don't know how much money they're going to have. Well, uh, so but they do have money coming off the books in the forms of, you know, Max Scherzer, Nathan Avaldi, likely um, Yates, Robertson, likely. Uh, Jose Leclerc, you know, yeah. there, there's, there's probably 55, 60 million that that's getting freed up and you got arbitration coming and you can do, you can do a lot with that. Um, yeah, there will be arbitration stuff, well, but, the, but that's a drop in the bucket compared to re-signing Nathan Avaldi sure. or, or, uh, <clears throat> Kirby Yates. Or, sure. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and the, the thing that's, that's good about this team, no matter what anyone says, well, first, let me give you some advice to the ownership right now. Putting a good product on the field is what will drive whatever you use for your TV, for whatever you use for that. People will put their eyes on it if this team is winning, competing, yeah. and in it. That's everybody. That doesn't matter what team you are. That's what gets the eyes to it. Second of all, um, in spending your – one of the good things that this team has is they have a good foundation of young players that are under control that can help – offset when you need to spend a little bit of money. So going in, yes, you want to see them spend the money free agent wise. We both do. We want to see them get some good names in here and do that, but they're sitting right now with a good team. Yeah. The guys that are, I yeah. mean, even if Evaldi leaves, they're sitting with a good competitive team. Do they need help? Sure. They do. Yeah. They've got to shore up some bullpen. They need some rotation spots. Another bat would help, but they are sitting on the potential to not have to go spend a ton of money. I hope they do. 
Yeah. That's what we hope. And they've got some money to spend. And, but to Ray Davis, my advice would be, because you know he listens to me all the time. Every time I see him, he just wants to hear what I want to say. You need you need to put a great product on the field, and that's going to create revenue, period. Okay, well, you look at the World Series. Yeah. It's uh, two, of the two, two of the three biggest spenders. Yeah. All right. So, and the other one got and, knocked out in the, in, in right, the, uh, that's got knocked out. <laughs> and so, and then, you know, you look at the Rangers, they won a world series and everybody's like, well, it's because they spent money. And that's, that's hard to argue with. I mean, nope. Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager and DeGrom, obviously that hasn't come mm -hmm. to fruition yet, but Valdi did. But he's still under control. Cheap. Yep. Uh, Scherzer, adding Scherzer's salary wasn't cheap. Um, so yeah, you, <laughs> You got to spend money to win. I mean, sure. there's there's just there's just no way to do uh, uh, no other way to say it. You you the teams that spend win. Right, but I, I do like I do appreciate in Ray Davis the fact that and I know people can get mad at this. They can say it. He's he's also not a fiscal idiot. You know what I mean? He doesn't chase bad money. He wants to see the money work for him, and that's that's just good business. This team isn't here to make him billions. He'll make that when he sells the team. This team is here. To, to self-sustain yeah. you don't want to as a billionaire if you can make it self-sustain and you're not having to re everybody says well you can just reach in his pocket he's probably got money to pay nathan Avaldi in his back pocket he probably does but commingling funds in different ways is not the way businessmen do business well but you also got to look at it, he he's this isn't his business he's made his fortune sure He's not trying to pay bills, all right? His bills are taken care of. Right. Uh, you know, and, and you can also, you know, look at what winning the World Series did for uh, just how excited the community was. Absolutely. You know, half a million people at the parade. Sure. Um, at least. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's like a civic obligation if you're the owner of a team. Mm -hmm. um, and if that means that you have to go out and spend some of your own money, that's fine. You're going to make it all back when you sell the team, without a doubt. You're not just sell it. You're going to, you're, you're you're not just going to make money. You're you're going to like make a pile of. Money. You're going to make four times what you bought it. What did they build? They bought this thing for half a billion. They bought it for five ninety three out of one hundred ninety three million. What I said. This yeah. pro this franchise is at least worth two billion dollars right now. At least probably. Two, I think I saw an estimate recently. It's worth two and a half um, billion dollars, and and that might be low. Because you know, if you factor in the ballpark and all of that, sure. So anyway, it's it's uh, <laughs> he's going to make his money. He's he, he, you know, he, I don't know how old he is. Nobody's ever said, but the he's, thought is he's eighty two or eighty three. Sure. Okay. He's healthy. Look, he's 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 so, around there. He's very so, healthy and 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 you know, does he care about his legacy? You know, is his legacy just one World Series and then sell off the team, uh, or is it? win multiple world series and be considered the best owner in, in franchise history. Um, Does I, he, I think that I, I don't, I don't know. You, you don't know them. You don't know the man very well because he's not accessible to the media. He uh, says hello he's, when he's yeah, out he, there, he, but he he's, doesn't, he's nice enough, but he doesn't sit down with us. No, nope. you know, we haven't had a sit down interview with him as a group Until he fired for, for a long time. Well, like, yeah, there was that, but like, um, you know, he, he, for a few years at spring training, he wanted to meet with us and talk to us. I think he only did it once. You know, he predicted that you Darvish was going to win a Cy Young and all this stuff. Um, but anyway, we're, we're kind of off track here. The money, the money's the thing. Um, he, he needs, he needs to not be cheap here. He needs, sure, sure. he needs to reach into his pocket and sustain it. Uh, you know, if there's 100% if, if, there, if there's going to be a gap on the TV money from this year to next year, like if there's not going to be much this year, but there's going to be more next year. All right, he can float that. Sure, he's 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 got the money to do it, and so does Neil Lehman to help out. Sure, you know, you, there there are minority owners; they probably don't want to put up too much, but they're there too. They right. have money, so there's a way to do this. Is what I'm saying. So I don't want to hear that. Oh, their TV deal is terrible. We have to reduce our payroll by fifty million. No, you don't. No, you don't. All right. Yeah, that's that's a load of crap. There's money out there to do it. So, but anyway, let's say it isn't. Uh, let's say they do want to keep the the payroll at two hundred and fifteen million. All okay. right, and that's still a lot of money. Twenty, let's say twenty five million less than last year. All right, so that's Scherzer and uh, that's Scherzer and uh, uh, Leclerc. All right, yeah. all right, that's fine. But one way to keep costs down is trades, 
And I right. think that's what you're alluding to here. Right. Uh, you know, you, you don't, you don't have to s- just get players f- via free agency. You can go out and get them in a number of ways. The Rangers have depth in their farm system. They have the ability to, to trade from the farm system. That's why you have a good farm system right? to a help the big league club and B help the big league club through player acquisition. So yep. trade targets. I know you're, you're high on one. And I think we kind of talked about it a little bit, but, and I, you know, it kind of makes some sense. Go ahead. Jordan Montgomery. Yeah. Look, that, that what that, I, I wrote a little thing about this. I know that was mine. I'm just, I'm in my brain. I just had to get it out and I made a trade proposal. Okay. Okay. But here, I'm not even going to put it out there, but I'm just going to say, wouldn't it take, first of all, one of these guys on the 40 man that we probably, something needs to happen with him, right? Yeah. But, that you need to get off. So let's just say one of those names. That, that it, one way or the other, either you're going to DFA him or you got to get rid of him, but that's not going to do it. And then you go down and dip into one of your good young middle infielders or pitchers or anybody that did really good and ended up 19 years old in down east, had good numbers, has a high future, maybe not quite top 30. Maybe he is 30. I don't know. Down there, and if you took something like that and went to the Diamondbacks where the owner, in fact, has said, I screwed up. Yeah, I made a big mistake. This is one of the dumbest things. I, I went to the front office and 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 said to them after Rodriguez got hurt, why don't we go get Jordan Montgomery? And he came in almost close to opening day. Right. Never got going, never had a full offseason. I made a stupid mistake. Well, they can return about Jordan. So so you give them two guys and say, give me $10 million also. Yeah. So now Jordan Montgomery cost me $12.5 million. That's what he cost me. To get his because he's twenty two point five, he's going to do the option because he's not going to get free agent money. That's going to be twenty two point five million dollars. That's right. not going to happen after the right. season he had. What does he do? He comes back to the team where he won a World Series. He comes back to the pitching coach who has been with him since he was in St. Louis. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense, John. So for twelve point five million dollars, that's like going out and signing a guy that's a middle tier starting pitcher. Yeah, to kind of shore up the back end of your rotation. We know what Jordan Montgomery is capable of doing. Let's say he is, this is the new Jordan Gum- Montgomery. It's $12.5 million of your money. Throw him in the bullpen and turn him into Heaney or whoever if you have to. Kind of what the, the the Diamondbacks had to do. But coming into a full spring training, a full off season, getting to go in and get his innings during spring training to do it, I'm sorry, this guy is a, he's not a top of the rotation guy. But that's an inning-eating son of a gun. Yeah, you know, look, he, he's been very, very good with the exception of last year. Right. And so you look at last year. Well, what happened? Well, he did not have a spring training. No, that's, he didn't. That's the main thing. He probably, just judging by the what happened after he signed and how he fired Scott Boris and all of this, he probably was uh, distracted while he was working out, mm-hmm. building up his pitch count. Not facing batters, but you know, still working out. It's not like he hadn't thrown a pitch. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was but, getting ready. But then he makes two uh, rehab starts, if you will, uh, in the minor leagues, and voila, he's in the, he's in the big leagues. Um, you know, he didn't have an opportunity to work with the pitching coaches right in spring training. Right, he, you know, it, it's just it was just an uh, an upsetting situation. Now, exactly. The counterpoint to that is Blake Snell had the same situation and was bad when he came out, and then in the second half was fantastic. Uh, Jordan, Emily's here. Jordan didn't make the adjustments. Hang on, Emily. Hang and on, then, Emily. Uh, gotcha. Uh, but anyway, it wouldn't be a bad deal. I think it would take more than just some middling prospects. I think you'd have to you'd have to put up a good prospect. The, the more, if you depending on how much salary you want them to eat, you're going to have sure. to sacrifice better prospects. Sure. But uh, anyway, uh, I don't mind the idea, John. Okay. I really, I really don't. I really right. don't. But yeah. Hey, hey guys, lot. we're bringing in right now. Let's bring her to the the thing here. It says, there she Hi. is. There's Hi. our girl right there, guys. Welcome to the show right now, Emily Jones McCoy. I'm always going to say McCoy because that's her name. That's her name. Yeah. I know that mm-hmm. most most of you might know her as Emily Jones from TV, from the from the TV broadcast. Hey. We wanted to bring you in because of my shirt and what you're wearing right now, but we, we got to talk some Rangers too. So what's going on lady? Well, you bring up McCoy and he's in the doghouse right now because apparently Uh-oh. at some point he slept. Okay. Let me just give you guys a tip. All husbands. 
Okay. Don't sleep in the guest bed. Don't. <laughs> I don't even know at what point this week my husband slept in the guest bed, which that's probably an issue. But he slept in the guest bed and then didn't make it up. And oh, my God. Okay. Oh, no, that's okay. Uh, oh, okay. So, Mike, come on, Mike. This All is right. egregious. Um, our marriage was fine until then. And now I'm just, I'm wondering where we go from here. Um, there are so reasons. Anyway. What's his explanation? I, I sent him a text. So we have our, our housekeeper here today and she, my saving grace, Miss Vicky. And she was like, oh, do you want me to wash the sheets in the guest room? And I'm like, no, why? And she's like, well, I mean, it's not made up. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so I was like, Are you what kicking him we... in your sleep or something? I don't know. <laughs> so I sent him a, I told Vicky, I said, hold on, let me take a picture. So I took a picture and I sent it to him with the simple text of seriously, question mark. <laughs> and, uh. I haven't received a response yet. <laughs> he's crafting his response. He, he has huddled up the masses. He's like, okay, how am I going to handle this? He was probably my, getting... my guess is it will be like an eye roll emoji with like a scared face emoji with like a ha emoji, which is kind of how our marriage works. Maybe he didn't feel good. Maybe he was a little gassy. That's, that's how all marriages work. We do that. Kathy yeah, like has to, every once in a while, Kathy has to do like Monday night. She has to go to work at like, eight o'clock at night and work through the night. She works in the medical field. And so she'll go to bed at six o'clock. And I'm like, if I stay up, I'm like, I'll just go to the guest room. I don't want to wake you up when I try to come to bed, when you've got to get up to do that. But uh, I do make the bed because I don't want the, what, what Mike just went through. I don't. Well, if he responds <laughs> during the show, you got to yeah, tell us. I will. And true, okay. and let's be real. Mike McCoy hasn't made a bed since we <laughs> married 15 years ago. So I don't know why I would expect anything less. It's like the soaking of the dishes. Like, don't soak yeah. it; just scrub it. Like, let's let's get let's go. The, dish, the dishwasher doesn't do the job. Either. No, I, I I'm the I'm the dish then, guy. He'll I do say, the dishes. I'm soaking something, and there's literally nothing in there. It's just sitting <laughs> in the sink, and I'm like, this is. You're at least if you're going to pretend to soak something, put some water and some soap in it. So it actually Amen, works. sister. I'm the one that does the dishes just because it's my OCD. I like to get it done. And I tell my kids and my wife over and over and over, if you're just going to put the plate in there, either rinse it off or set it in water. It just makes it easier for me just because I, I enjoy it. It's like my, to me, it's no big deal to do laundry. I kind of enjoy doing it too. So it's no big deal, but I've got certain deal and they ignore that Emily. And it pisses me off to no end. It's insane. Cause, it's Cause you know, they're there. They know there's no repercussions. Yeah. There's not oh, yes. because I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's it. Mike McCoy. He is fully aware of how severe my neurosis, OCD, whatever it is, is that he's just like, I mean, <laughs> What's she going to do? Let it sit there. <laughs> hey, before we go further, I got to ask, how did Henry's football end? So he's got one more game. Um, it's been quite an QB, experience. Right? Uh, seventh grade. Yep. He started every game but one. And I will tell you, I, I was really proud, honestly, because the last game he didn't start and his buddy did. And I wondered how he would take that. Like, does he see it as a demotion or whatever right. and they kind of mix things up in seventh grade it's their first year to play tackle but regardless right. um his buddy's a really good quarterback too and um after his buddy they scored the first touchdown henry was the first one on the field to congratulate awesome. him and that awesome. made me he got <laughs> i think i probably cried when i got home and i told him how proud i was of him <laughs> for that and i was like i don't care if you throw 25 touchdowns like the fact that you did that it means it to me make. As a mom, um, as your mom, than any sort of you know uh, quarterback rating at this point in time. So yeah. anyway, yeah, it's going good. It's fun. You got the stats broken now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is he is he a dual threat or is he a pocket passer? I mean, what? they don't they don't encourage dual threat uh, in seventh grade. So it's <laughs> it's pretty much sometimes there's a scramble for your life mode that occurs. Yeah. But I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna say there's usually some uh, breakdown in pass protection in seventh yeah. grade. It's, <laughs> but it's been fun. It's been do they fun. have do they have game changer for football? Like they no. do for baseball? No. No. All right. Yeah. If you've never watched seventh, I mean, I look, I coached it when my when my youngest son, who's now a senior, played football up until high school, and that's when the whole brain thing happened. But I coached all of it. If you've never watched it, it is when you go to watch high school or college, like senior high school, college, it's so slow to watch 
these kids play. But uh, man, it's fun. But man, there are so many. There are kids that probably are never going to play after this season that are on the team. They all want to check out football in seventh grade. Yeah, that's yeah. when everybody goes out for it and does it. So he so he ended up quarterback. I knew that you had talked about that. I'm sorry, Emily and I are talking the dug out every time and i'm always asking about henry That's and okay. mike does too he fills me in sometimes on it so okay where do we want to go first do we want to get into some off-season do stuff it for or do it first just do it she's here she's got the hat on i i just didn't even think about it and have nothing to do it for dirt on and jd's coming on the daily show so i'm going to try to sneak home and get <laughs> i know where our hat is at least and pick it up i mean you i'm like i'm a total idiot ball. here you know and anthony and i were texting about it this morning and Whatever. Well, yeah, and, and like I said, and I said this earlier in the day, if we could have our wishes, anything, this wouldn't be a necessary thing or it wouldn't be a thing happening anyway. We yeah. would much rather. I didn't know Richard. Y'all did. Uh, I know Kelly and the kids. They are just unbelievably fantastic kids. And, and her, I just love her to death. She always asked me how Kevin is because I met her the, on the golf course and doing that. But it is one of the greatest events. I've just enjoyed it. You guys sit on the board for it and y'all been there from the beginning i'm just free labor i love to go help out and cat and i bought vip with our daughter we're going to be their vip this time go get your tickets guys they're, look this is huge this is going to be big josh abbott yeah it's we we had a like a site walk yesterday um uh, anthony andrew and greg denman and myself at texas live and it we're set up in that backyard concert area and that whole space is ours downstairs. Upstairs will be the VIP, but that whole space is ours. And we're so excited um, about Josh Abbott band playing, of course. Um, and it's, you know, we we have we we have our our loyal and faithful do it for Durrett supporters, and we are so incredibly grateful for them. And um, we know that they'll be there, but it's been fun to kind of open our mission, open this foundation and expose it to a whole new crop of people and to be able to tell the stories um, of the Do It For Durrett Foundation and our mission and share that with more people than than we could have if we just would have had a traditional event like we've had in the past, which have all been wonderful. But we kind of thought with it being the 10 year anniversary um, that it was time to kind of kick it up a notch. And so it's a full blown concert. We are a, an official stop on the Josh Abbott band tour. And, um, we're super stoked about it. I think it's going to be a blast. It's going to be, it, it's going to be a really good crowd as far as numbers. But if you've ever been to like a packed concert at, um, Texas live, it's not going to be like that. It's not going to be nut to butt. It's not going to be anything. Like every, it's, you're going to have plenty of room to roam, um, to check out our awesome okay. silent auction items. Like, so it's going to be like our event usually is that it's still going to feel intimate. It's not like it's just, oh, here's a concert and we're raising money too. We wanted to to kind of weave those two things together. And we feel like um, we're going to be able to do that on Friday, not just with the concert, but also um, with the golf tournament at Grapevine Golf Club. Yeah, the golf tournament starts at nine in the morning. Still have spots available for that. The tickets you can get uh, uh, from our website or from AMS.com. Uh, for Texas Live website, also you can you can buy. Tickets yeah, they've been there. promoing it big. I've seen a lot of stuff coming out. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it's just going to be a great fun day. And you know Richard liked golf, and so that's that's very fitting. And then uh, I don't think he liked country music, but that's all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he he would have liked it. Yeah. He, he would he would have supported. There. And it yeah. doesn't matter. Kelly's in. That's all that matters. Now. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So, um, it, you know, ten ten years ago was in. Uh, was in June and, and Kelly had a kind of a gut wrenching post on Facebook about it. And, uh, but the kids, you know, Owen's driving for Christ's sake. Oh my and, God. And, uh, it's you know, taller than me. And, and Alice and, you know, Margo's a little spitfire with all that she's going through. Um, it's so, it, you know, I, I hope that, that Kelly, that the dirts are the model for all the families we've helped, you know, and, and, and talk about what we, that what y'all do yeah, with the money. So yeah, the first, the first event, uh, was it Billy Bob's and and we raised two hundred thousand dollars, gave it all to Kelly, and then it was like we had this great community with Emily and Anthony and and uh, John Daniels and uh, you know the concert was really Eric Nadell's idea, um, but uh, we decided to keep it going, but we didn't want to do it without Kelly's blessing, and of course she she said it would be great, so she hasn't received a dime since. I, I think you know there were there were even like people three or four year, years later was like why would I keep giving money to her? It's like you're not giving money to her. Yeah. Do, do a little research. 
anyway, we help families though that have uh, been impacted like the Durrits, uh, sudden loss, loss. Of, a sudden loss of a parent. Essentially, no, we 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 do we have branched out a little bit and 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 we'll do some other situations on a case by case basis, but. Uh, we've raised $2 million. We felt, I don't know, even know how many families. We've 250 helped. plus. 250, um, you know, and, and we are a nonprofit. So uh, we are not, uh, not uh, all, well, the, all, the, all the funds are go directly to the people. Uh, we always have a little in reserve to help out, but. Um, yeah. And cover, that's what I think too. I, it's important. You have a lot of, you know, huge, big nonprofits that do wonderful things. Um, mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I'm affiliated with some of them and I'm grateful for those. For us, you know, those people have staff and they have people right. on the payroll and all that. that. That's not the case with us. We are now seven strong. We started out as five. We've added two new members over the years who have been, you know, super instrumental to what we've been able to do with our mission. But every single penny we raise, none of it is going to anybody on the board. It's to cover right. expenses for our events and everything is passed along to, you know, the, the people that we help. And um, you know, it's something I, you know, I talk about this all the time, like outside of my family, like this is the thing I'm the most proud of because it makes such an impact. And you, you know, you read these stories when people reach out to us and then, you know, we help them. And then you read the the letters of gratitude that they send. And that's what gets you. Um, and, and to know mm. that, and it's like Kelly said, we're not trying to, to take your grief away or to, we're just trying to, to give you a little bit of time and a little bit of breathing room to, to have a, a small piece of this taken care of, um, you know, whether it's taking care of a funeral expense or a medical bill or whatever that is, um, or just money for, so your kids aren't going without, you know, um, to, to ease that burden a little bit and, and give you a little bit of breathing room to focus on what really does matter. And that's processing that grief and going through it together as a family and, and getting the support that you need. So it's something that is, um, you know, it's so special to, to all of us who are involved and not even just on the board, but the people who have been supporters for, for a long period of time. I know, you know, John, you take great pride in being, you know, yeah. associated with do it for Dura and supporting it and stuff like that. Just, we can't express enough how much it means to us. Well, yeah. Kathy, Kathy loves it every year and she, she met Kelly and she's like, I, this is one of her things she loves to go do. And, but she loves what it takes care of. And for us personally, we dealt with something with our son. I, it's nothing compared to losing somebody, but I can tell you right now, when your head goes through a sudden loss or any trauma like that, your brain is not focused anywhere on but what's in front of you. So this money can go to people. I mean, losing someone, I don't know what that feels like. You lose someone suddenly, your mind is not in place. You are dealing with so much outside of what you normally do. That's what I love about this. This is money to be there. To We're here. Just tell us what you need. We're here. That's what that money's built for. And I can't imagine how much it, it, I would need it if I lost Kathy suddenly. I would not know what to do. I mean, really? it would be unbelievable. Yeah. And, and I think too, it's like, and I, one thing we pride ourselves in is, you know, it's like, if we, if, you know, we, this stuff is like paying mortgages and, and car sure. payments, because a lot of times, you know, it's, it's a long time before like insurance money comes in, or you have the time to sort through all that paperwork. And that's another sure. thing we pride ourselves. There's no application process for a grant from the Do It For Dorit Foundation. It is, it is word of mouth. It's reaching out on our website, on social media to a board member. And then basically we have a text string and we send each of the details there's a, a vetting process of checking to make sure that you know these We're dollars there. are going yeah. for somebody that's deserving and um you know it, it's a very it's a quick process i mean someone could reach out to us today and i could have a check in the mail to them this afternoon um yeah. and that's what we we really want to be able to do is to provide that immediate financial assistance to to get you through this blur that's going on it's a, I get emotional about it, but I've, I've seen the families at these events and they're so thankful and they're there and your heart, you're just in the background and my heart's just over there with emotions going, you know, it, look, this doesn't take away anything, but God, I hope it helps in some way. I mean, good Lord. I mean, I, I can't imagine. I don't want to be sitting where they're sitting right now. And I love it. I just love it. I hate that it has that it's happening because of you guys losing Richard and Kelly losing Richard. Uh, that we would more than anything just be doing some other thing. That's what we'd rather be doing. But man, it, it's been so helpful and I just love it. I, I, I just love what, what it does. I love the event and what it means. Yeah. You, you leave feeling good. 
Yes. You know, and then it never have not felt good. And, uh, you know, we, we talk about the board members, but, uh, Brandon Boyd with the Rangers, uh, has, has been very, uh, instrumental Huge. in helping us yeah. get, uh, get stuff to auction off, not just from the Rangers, but from, uh, uh, all the teams. Um, and, and then Brett Richards, our, our auctioneer, who's, who's one of a kind, he's man. good, but he's, he's I had a great. call with him this morning. He's something, <laughs> you know, even though he's an Aggie, he's all right. Um, uh, and, and so, uh, anyway, it's, it, it's just stuff like that. And then all of our, all of the families that have been, uh, oh. affected, but also the supporters, like, you know, the McDonald's family. And I mean, they've been at every one and, and uh, I don't want to leave anybody out. So I'm going to stop there, but, um, just so many people that, that have donated so much money, uh, Sharon Perkins, I'll, 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 I'll include Sharon. Uh, Sharon's great. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, um, and the man's the man's have been a huge right, supporters. Right, I mean, we right. had a ton. I mean, I mean not to going. mention our sponsors. I mean, the people. I mean, Gateway Buick GM. Sorry, not Buick anymore. Gateway GMC <laughs> has always been Charles Cooksey is uh, just supports literally everything that that the Durrett Foundation does, and we're so grateful to him for being the you know presenting sponsor once again this year, not only of the golf tournament but of the concert. So yeah, it's so many people that that you know, recognize what we're doing and, and want to help. Yeah. Hey guys, go sign up. I mean, it, we're what, two weeks away. It's the eighth. No, no, eight weeks from tomorrow. Yeah. 15 days. Oh, good is it? or is it two weeks? It's two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Oh, oh praise Jesus. That means we have a little <laughs> extra time. Next, next week is the first. Then. Yeah. Next okay. week's the first. Okay. Listen, go do it. The golf tournament's always a blast. I love I love playing in the golf tournament every year. Uh, the, the the event is normally there's always some kind of little music, but it's fun. What's going on this year? The concert it's going to be at Texas Live. It's what is it? What website? Do it is it uh, for dirt dot com. Do it for dirt dot com. Look at or go to media. Eventbrite, Eventbrite, and search yes. Durrett. Um, you know, there's a million. Email me Emily Jones nineteen seventy seven at yahoo dot com. I've been passing yep. out my email on everything I go on. Just say reach out to me directly if if you yep. want information. Happy to do it. Cool. DM Jeff cool. and I anytime. We'll get it where it needs to go. We'll get you anything you need to go. You can email me to you know uh, I, whatever. I don't care. I mean, I'll I'll get you anything you want to know about this event if you want to go to it. Um, because I just think that you'll have a great time. You'll see former Rangers there. You'll see media members that you know there. You'll see a bunch of people that are there for the good of other people. Yeah. And that, yeah. no more than anything, that's what is more impressive is what it's all about. And it's just, to me, it's just, you just walk around with your me a beer and go on. This is awesome. Well, and then one one thing I do want to pass along since this is a Rangers podcast is that, you know, um, I reached out to Maddie Seeger and uh -huh. uh, Corey's wife, and she was within, you know, minutes was like, absolutely. I She said she remembered hearing about it at the Rangers award banquet and what a great mission. And so, you know, Corey, Corey is usually at the ballpark. He is all business and he is working. And he's got his routine. Um, but Corey and Maddie are donating uh, club level tickets, uh, batting pra practice, and a meet and greet with Corey, which is That's a awesome. Huge, huge get um, that I think will raise a lot of money. So, and there's lots of those. Uh, Tara Simeon is making a, a, a basket, the Marcus stuff. Um, Warstick is has a, um, a custom, they're making a custom bat with like the Durrett logo um we just it's so awesome. many pe people have helped so that those are some ranger centric things for you josh smith yeah. same thing batting practice um all that kind of stuff so it, just so grateful for yeah. for everyone yeah. and their support war, war stick is is one of the owners is ian kinsler so yeah. that, and, yes. and yeah. ian ian knew richard uh colby yeah. lewis who comes to our event every year from california all right he doesn't just come in from Louisville. he comes in from california and uh, so, you know, we, it's a tight bond. No, nobody disliked Richard and, and, uh, and, and for, for those guys to keep him in their, their thoughts and to help us out, uh, it's awesome. So, uh, I'm, I'm looking for, I didn't know about the war stick, man. I'm going to have to bid on it. Yeah. Yeah. He sent me some, yeah. He, it's good. He's getting it to me, I think in the next week or so, but, okay. um, he sent me some like proofs of it. And it's going to be really cool. That's awesome. Well, Y'all still have kids playing ball. I don't. So I don't, my wife doesn't have to worry about me going after the bat because my kids are going oh, to use it. 
<laughs> I, I don't think this is a for use bat. I think this is a I'm sure Henry, display. I'm sure Henry will find a way. To well, do Kathy, I'm sorry. Then maybe I will get in on yeah. this. I don't know. I've, we've got our little upstairs game room with all the memorabilia in it. But let's, you know, we, we've, we've talked about Durant real quick before we get you out of here uh, doing that. What went wrong this year? What, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, we've, we've probably discussed this, but let's hear it here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it was a, a combination of things. I mean, you know, and I hate the term World Series hangover because I don't feel like it's like, oh, yeah, we've reached the top of the mountain and now we're just going to coast down. Like, that's not the case at all. I do think they were so many of those guys were physically and emotionally drained. And I think it bumped back training programs and their routine that they had been so used to um, that I think that played a part in it. So I don't like the term World Series hangover, but I do think that it, it there is that's another level of conditioning, right? And and sure. not only your body, but your mind to where you basically get a whole month cut out of your off season. And on top of that, that month is so emotionally and physically trying and stressful and intense. It, that's, that's something that now the, the vast majority of the guys on this team now know based on 2023. And so it's, it's all about this learning process. The injuries obviously didn't help. Um, right. And then you had a couple guys who I feel like you know, when they go, this team goes with them and they, he, they just weren't there. They just, they didn't, they, they didn't have those performances. And I'm talking about, you know, Adolis Garcia, the fact that you didn't have Josh Young, the vast majority of the season. Um, you know, there's a, there, there was a number of contributing factors and I don't think you can point to just one thing. I do feel like 2023 was not just like this total abomination and it's never going to happen again. And that was just a either. fluke. And I don't believe that. I think this team has um, the guts they're, if you they're will, good. to win. Yeah. 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 They're yeah good. The, the, you know, you have one less month to recover. So you start your workouts early. You're not recovered. So you, you're still, you're not fully healthy and rested. So if you were dealing with something, you're still dealing with it if you start working out after only two weeks, like Marcus Simeon. Sure. A lot of these guys, Josh Spores started working out two weeks after the World Series. So, yep. you know, it's well, it's rough. Well, we also had – look at some of the players that that, that had down years, um, you know, especially uh, Corey Seager and Nate Lowe, who didn't have spring training, basically. Yeah. I mean, these are guys that, that you know, Corey didn't realize about the sports hernia until right after the season. We kind of found out about that later. I mean, these guys, all they talked about at the end of this year was, I'm ready for a full, healthy offseason to be ready. I'm going to be 100% heading into spring training. Yeah. And look at what Jordan Montgomery, we already talked about that earlier. He didn't have a spring training because he didn't get signed. These guys can't stress enough how spring training is so important. And some of your key players didn't have a spring training. Yeah, And, no. I mean, that that hurts too. I, I have said it over. You can't use injuries. Everyone goes through injuries. Oh, and, sure. and during that, it's just we had some players that we all – believe our big core of this team had some down years and it you happens. Can, you but, can have injuries or you can have underperformance, but you can't have them both. Exactly. And the Rangers had both. Exactly. So. I, that's what I, I agree. And yeah. so off season's about, about here. And I mean, we're close. We're about, uh, what, 10, 11 days from yeah, it all know. turning on again. Hey, uh, what are you hearing about the TV deal, Emily? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I have a meeting with them on with the Rangers on Wednesday next week. Um, so we'll see. I don't. I it gives me such tired head. I I can't. I've never been able to make sense of it. Um, like trying to digest the Mavs thing that yeah. is, it makes me insane. So I'm hoping it will be cut a little more cut and dry maybe, but who knows? Um, but if you're, if you came to me for TV answers, <laughs> you're in the wrong place. Well, we have to ask. I mean, well, yeah, oh yeah, feel free. And I'll be honest and tell you, <laughs> I, I, mean, it is no clue. I mean, it's crazy. It's, and it's, it's, uh, you know, John, John Heidke, you know him, he's, he's yeah. kind of steering the ship here. Um, but they're starting from scratch. They're starting with no deals. In place, no distribution deals in days in, in place, and so you got to get a lot of those to make this thing work, and you don't have a ton of time to do it. So, 
I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I do know they've been working on it for a really long time. Oh, for sure. It's not like they were banking on Bally at any point in time. Yeah, I was about to say, if you've been dealing with Bally, you probably had some behind-the-scenes stuff going on for a while now. And they they did have options, right? They had the option to go the MLB route, right? Yeah. And they opted not to. So that that indicates that they have a a, a a relative. MLB could still handle the production, but as far as distributing the games, I think that's – Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it, we'll, we'll get our answers, but I mean, it's it's the story kind of hanging out. It's the elephant in the room. I know, yeah, and it sucks. Yeah, but all right. Well, good luck with your meeting. That'll be fun. Thanks. <laughs> go. See if they want me back or if we. That's, this this could be the end. I'm just kidding. Well, Who knows? Just be a mom game. There we go. I know. Yeah, it's, it's not like you don't do anything else, else Emily. It's yeah, like, you got about. Like you don't do. You're else. juggling so many things in the air I know. there. So. I know. We'll All right. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, and we'll, more, and one guys, more, one more time, do it for dirt.com. That's where you can get yes. all your information. The, live, the, the silent auction, we're doing it online. It starts tomorrow, 32auctions.com. Follow us on Twitter at do it for dirt. That's where all the information is going to be. And, uh, and, and if you want to play golf, if you want to come to the concert and you need help getting there, let me, Emily, or John know and we will get you there. Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll throw some stuff on Instagram too, just because for those of us who are anti X. Oh yeah, you sure are. So, <laughs> well, I mean, I still, I, I'm still on there. I just don't I check know. it very I often know. anymore. Right. Um, yeah. Cause it's accessible. I, it. I, I can <laughs> tell you it's worth, I'm, I'll tell you right now, do it for dirt is worth anything you put into it. If you want to go, it will be a amazing time. You'll enjoy it and you'll really love it. And just being there to watch what, what they do for other people in need, you're, you, it'll make you a repeat visitor i i went one time and i haven't stopped and then i got in i went before jeff and i even hooked up and started doing this thing and now i can't stop i i'm addicted to it i just think it's i think it's such a great cause and then well, we and appreciate just, your support thank you and so it's much. tax deductible it is it is yeah yeah it is we're a non-profit there you go yeah gum it we'll get you we'll get you a form yeah. okay all right um, okay we'll see you there for sure okay Okay, perfect. Thanks, Thanks you guys for having me on. Y'all have a All good right. weekend. All right, you, you too. too. Bye. Bye. All right, that was Emily. We get her out of here real quick. Uh, we were we finished up on the other part. I we, think so. Uh, you know, I I don't know how I don't know how teams identify trade targets, but they they have identified them. Okay, any other names? Trade wise, well, I think you can look. You know, everybody Would it be wa- pitching or bat or what? Everybody wants to look at the crappy teams, the White Sox. The A's, uh, whoever else stinks. The Marlins, yeah, um, they're bad for a reason. It's because they don't have good players. Right. Okay, so you know, you, you, and of course, when you trade for somebody, usually you want years. So I, I think you try to find a team that's kind of in transition. You know, a team that maybe has been good but is declining, um, and and maybe they're at a spot where they need to start looking around uh, and and considering. Hey, do we need to cut cut this payroll back a maybe little bit? Maybe they have a lot of depth. Maybe they need maybe their farm system's been depleted. Basically, I'm talking about the Astros, but of course, <laughs> the Astros aren't aren't going to do that. Uh, so it, you know, it's just you know, you know, the Angels. Who do the Angels have? Yeah, nobody. You right. know, they, you know, uh, and, the White and, Sox. That team always comes. The White up. Sox. You know, they're not. Do going you to- want Luis Robert Jr.? Eh, he's he's all right. You know, but but he's he's had a terrible year. That was it because he's the only bat in the lineup. Is that why? Whole thing, you know. I, I don't know, but I'm sure that the Rangers have. I know that the Rangers have a list. I don't know who's on it, but I know that they have been scouting other. They were scouting other teams at the end of the year for for trade guys that they had identified. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens. But it's going to uh, be interesting. Keep in mind trades. It helps with the, the roster flexibility because the Rangers have a bunch of forty man guys that maybe aren't quite ready. Yeah. Um. And and but. You know, like guys like Cole Wynn, for instance. You're going to need Cole Wynn this year, assuming he's healthy. What do you do with Sam Huff? They're 40 man guys. You need if you need 40 man spots, White. they're they're guys that that you might have to move and um, that have been good prospects in the past and and still the Rangers like, but you know they also like winning World Series and absolutely and, and, uh, they'll do whatever they can can to do that. So anyway, that they yeah, have the trade stuff. Shit, I don't know, but. Free agency. We'll, <laughs> we'll we'll get into free agency pretty soon here, but uh, maybe hey, we can do it next week. 
Hey guys, we've already got some good guests lined up that are coming up. We've already got confirmed. Uh, one of the things we do here, we did do it for do it for dirt today. One of the things we do, there's some other people that have their own charities that are coming up and we are a big proponent, especially if they're part of the Rangers organization, past or present, and they do some kind of fundraiser, uh, you know, whether it's Eric Nadell, Derek Collin, Jared Sandler, people like that, they can come on here and they can promo it, period. I mean, we're, we are for it because we like any anything like that. So we've got some booked up coming up. Jared Sandler's going to join us to talk about his. Uh, 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 I've already got uh, Derek Holland must come on and talk about 60 feet, 6 inches, which he, he – Their event is the day before Dirt for Dirt. Right. So he, he's got that. So he's going to come on and join us. Um, another good one coming up here right about mid-November. He's already said, let's do it. He enjoyed it last time. Remembered meet me at the draft. Uh, we got Jim Callis is going to join us again. Yeah, that was a great show when he was on a couple he years ago. He is fun. And w- when we get ready for that, Jim said, get me a date. I gave him a Thursday and Friday. He said, I'm good both those days. Okay. So we'll pick the date. We're going to do it. We're going to get some questions from you guys. Man, Jim's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's fun to pick his brain. And when you're a nerd like me on baseball, and Jeff just is the ultimate nerd. He knows more than I can forget. But uh, – or forgets more than I know, but I'm telling you right now, this will be fun. But guys, we appreciate it. The Do It For Direct Foundation is amazing to us. We wanted to get Emily on to do that. Um, say one more time where all this is. Yeah, all right. Do it for That's okay. that's That is where you need to start. Yep. You can get the information for the golf tournament. The, 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 exactly, the golf tournament, the Josh Abbott Band tournament, or not tournament, concert, right. Josh Abbott Band concert. It's on the homepage, and there's a button that says "Get Tickets." Yep. All right, and it'll take you to uh, Eventbrite, um, and it says "Get Tickets." So it's it it is it is not not hard to do. Uh, if you go to Texas Live, uh, they have a link for the tickets. Josh Abbott's website has a link for the tickets. So look, there's a lot of ways to get tickets. Uh, there are also now if if if, if you are technologically challenged and need help, let me know. Yeah. Like Emily said, she gave you her email address. Mine is jwilson uh, at alldls.com. Reach out to me and we'll get you set. We'll get you set up because you're going to enjoy it. Uh, everything is for a wonderful cause. Like I said, it's tax deductible, whatever you donate. Um, so get your, get your butts in gear and, and let's do this. It's November 8th, golf in the morning, concert at night. Fantastic. It's going to be a great time. Guys, we're going to put this one in the can and come back next week. Until then, we appreciate Emily Jones for coming on, Jeff Wilson. I'm John Moore. Guys, we'll see you at the yard.